Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name's Eclipse, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for anime, gaming, and more. I hope you're doing well. So I got a lot of comments on my last video saying how I got custom afterburners and how do I have access to the DDS file extension for Photoshop. And since these are relatively two easy things to actually show you guys, this video won't be taking long. I'm going to show you actually how to do both of these in one video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. So before I actually show you how to make a custom afterburner and all that good stuff in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a quick example. So we're in a test flight in my brand new MiG-23 MLA, which I recently unlocked not too long ago, been having a lot of fun in it. And we have this very beautiful custom skin, which I will leave a link down in the description below for you to check out for yourself. Now the creator of said skin did not create this afterburner, which I'm about to show you. I went ahead and created it myself to match the black and red aesthetic of this aircraft. So let's go ahead and get the candle lit for the MiG-23 MLA. And as you can see here, we have this very beautiful crimson red afterburner to match this very beautiful camo. But with that example out the way, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Alrighty, uh, here we are at my actual desktop. The first thing that I'm going to show you how to install is the uh, DDS plugin that you'll be using for all your skin customizations for aircraft, skin customizations for ground, and jet flame customizations for the afterburner of afterburning jets. Uh, the one that we are going to be using is by far the most simplest one to use, and that is the NVIDIA DDS plugin. Now, don't worry, you don't have to have a NVIDIA system in order to run this, run this plugin. It's just the plugin was just made by NVIDIA. Uh, we could be using the Intel one, but I've had issues with the Intel one where if I uh, tell it to do something, it does the opposite and it kind of just breaks the file. So in the description of this video, it will take you to a link where you can actually download this file as well as the afterburning jet flame that we'll be using in this video. You want to go ahead and open up the uh, folder that you just downloaded, open up Photoshop plugin. I'm going with 64 bit because my system is a 64 bit system. And then you want to go ahead and install and give it, a, uh, give it a moment to actually load up. Hit yes. Now it's going to go ahead and go through. I've already done this, but I'm going to go ahead and run through it again, just so it, so that way you guys can see the actual process. You're going to go ahead and hit next. I accept the terms. Now this might confuse some of you guys. Uh, and basically all you have to do is just hit a bunch of stuff, hit no, I don't want to subscribe, hit next. It'll register the product. Alrighty. Then you want to go ahead and select the location of where your Photoshop is. Now, I don't need to actually install this because again, I've already done the whole entire installation process on my part. So I already have this downloaded and stuff like that. But basically once you find the location of where your Photoshop is, you're just going to hit, hit next and install and as simple as uh, that. So now with the DDS installation part out the way, now we should be able to access any sort of War Thunder DDS file, including the Jet Flame. DDS file that will be also a part of the Photoshop plugin link down in the description below. So now what you want to do is simply just open up Photoshop and go ahead and open up the jet flame diamond DDS. You, you won't see the copy. So don't worry about the copy DDS. This is just something I had on the desktop already and stuff to get ease of access to it. And it is white because I had on my SPSK, I had a white afterburner after I got done creating the review. But simply all you really want to do is just go to image adjustment levels or not levels, excuse me, uh, image adjustment adjustments and uh, hue and saturation. And all you really have to do now is just mess with the color and of what you really want. You have to hit colorize, my bad. Okay. There we go. Uh, so you just want to bump up the saturation and that's how you basically create your own custom flame. Just make it to whatever color you want. So for example, I want mine a, uh, a neon green. For example, go ahead and hit OK. Now here's the part that we're going to be doing to export the file. You just want to go ahead and hit file. 
save as, save on your computer. Don't worry about the copy. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now, don't worry about this. You won't see Intel TextureWorks.dds. You'll see something called D3D slash DDS, and that's the one that you want to click. And you want to go ahead and hit save, and you'll see this. Don't worry about this. Just go ahead and hit save, and it should save, and you should see it right here. So I have it saved to my desktop, so it will show up on my des desktop. Now, next thing we want to do is you want to go ahead and open up where your War Thunder is located. So I'm just going to take the easy way, go to Steam, go to Browse Local Files, and boom, there we are. Already in the game root folder of War Thunder. Let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit bigger so I can actually see. We're going to go to User Skins and find the jet aircraft that has a afterburner. Remember, this only works with afterburning jets. So for me, it would be the MLA. Sorry for that little jump cut. I actually had to go and download me another Mega 23 MLA skin uh, for this tutorial. So what you want to do now is you want to go ahead and find the jet aircraft that has an afterburner. Remember, this will only work for jets that have afterburner. But you want to go ahead and find the aircraft that you're working on. So for me, it would be the MiG-23 MLA. And you want to take this, take your afterburner file and you want to move it into this folder. Go ahead and replace that. Then you want to go ahead and open up the uh, config file, which I already did. And uh, so this file actually, this custom skin has a custom afterburner, but I went ahead and created, I went ahead and made a, a copy of this, of that file and just deleted that. So now what you want to do is in the link of this, or not in the link, in the description of this video, sorry, I will have the command that you will need to enable the custom afterburner. What you want to do is you want to copy and paste that. Sorry, you have it copied. I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And it has to be exactly like this. If it's not, let's say, for example, you have something like that, or you have something like that, then it will not work. The game is going to look at you like you're stupid and tell you to go back and fix it. So when you have it like that, you want to go ahead and hit file, save, and now when you reopened War Thunder or relaunch it rather, let's go ahead and relaunch War Thunder. Now that we have War Thunder all booted up again, now what you want to go ahead and do is you want to right click on your aircraft. So for me, again, it will be the MLA. Go to customize and you want to hit this little refresh icon. Basically what we will do is refresh the entire skin folder, making the game search through the entire folder. So now when we go into a test flight, the afterburner should work. If not, then please feel free to leave a question down in the comment section below and I will try my best to help you in any way possible. But with that being said, let's go ahead and light the candle on this aircraft to see if our custom afterburner worked. And as you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, the custom afterburner is on. Uh, I went with neon green, so therefore the game shows up neon green. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, and if you did find this helpful, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing below as it makes you one cool person and it also helps out the channel. This has been your host Eclipse Dwell, showing you how to make a custom afterburner in War Thunder. I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.